Well, everybody, the next Escape for Tarkov wipe is just about here. So I wanted to share my top five strategies that I personally do to get a head start against other players. So let's get started. The first thing that I do is getting my unknown key and machinery key. I examine some of my items in my inventory and I queue in to a customs match to try to grab these two keys. And even though you might not have these missions just yet, you're gonna be receiving them shortly after your first set of missions. These keys are highly sought after and can be really difficult to obtain later on. So it might be a good idea to run a quick match to get your hands on them and putting them in your secured container. The unknown key can be found at the RUAF roadblock extraction on a dead body in a bush. And the machinery key is located on level two of the three story dorms at the jump over jacket room. Even if you die with these keys on you, you will still be making progress because you won't have to come back to these locations later or fight for them because they will be highly contested once people check out streets. Number two, it's time to unlock Jaeger as soon as possible. I know he doesn't have the most entertaining set of missions and a lot of players don't really enjoy doing his quests, but you cannot deny that his items are amazing, especially on day one of a Tarkov wipe. So immediately after examining some items in my inventory and playing out my first raid for the keys, I will be level two and you should be as well, even if you die. So go over to the mechanic and accept the introduction quest and then queue into woods right away. If you haven't done this quest before, I have a video on how you can complete it as well as on the wiki, but you wanna grab the letter that's under the deer stand near the downed plane on woods. Once you've grabbed the letter, hightail it out of there as quickly as you possibly can and go towards the extraction. With this mission, time is of the essence. The sooner that you can grab the letter and extract from the raid, the better because it's gonna get you access to the OP SKS, which is one of the best starting weapons in the game. The SKS has a dovetail mount, which is different from the Prapor version, which allows you to buy a PSO or a Cobra site immediately. And through Peacekeeper level one, you will have access to a 20 round magazine. It is one of the most powerful tools day one, you have an effective DMR that can even go and kill raiders if you choose to do so. In addition to this, you will also be able to buy the MP133 shotguns from Prapor for his debut quest. Now my third tip for you guys is kind of a no-brainer, but it might be good for new Escape for Tarkov players to hear. Stick to your missions. The sound of gunfire might seem enticing, but more often than not, it leads to your death unless you absolutely need to be in a certain area of the map to complete a quest or loot an item, it's best to avoid unnecessary action. This is especially important with the introduction of the find and raid status of items, because when you survive, you get your bonus experience, you get your items that you can use for your quests, items that you can sell to the flea market. So a good raid with completed missions, scav killed, and items to sell is far more important than investigating a firefight on the other side of the map in a location where you do not need to be. Clever squads will Use sound, especially on the first couple of days, to lure players into a trap. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Focus on winning, because an escape from Tarkov PvP may not be the most important thing, and certainly isn't on the first day of the wipe. The missions that you set for yourself might not necessarily be the tasks that you have. Maybe you want to make a little money, go to a certain area of the map to loot some items, farm a key, or actually PvP. Either way, the point is don't deviate too much from the goal that you've set for yourself. Stick to the plan and focus on surviving the raid. Number four, choosing what to do with the items that you find in your raids, either selling them or hoarding them. Both options do have their benefits, but it's important, I think, for the player to decide what route they want to take. One option, of course, is to sell your Hido items immediately at level 15 on the flea market, which will earn you millions of rubles in the first couple days of a wipe. With this strategy, Hydro items will sell for five to 10 times more at the beginning of a wipe than they will a few weeks later on. So for example, a corrugated hose will sell from anywhere between 100 to 200K on wipe day, but four weeks down the line, it will probably sell for 20 to 30K. On the other hand, selling all your items can greatly impact your ability to complete quests quickly because you need to gather essential quest items again to progress the missions. A good strategy is to keep your items in your Lucky Scab jump box and review a list of required quest items to power level your character faster at the cost of making money. I personally think it's important for players to make that distinction and not try to do both things. 
I think it depends on how much the player values experience. Do you want to get those level two, three, four traders ahead of the competition and have more tools available to you? Or do you want to have a large pile of money, maybe slow down the leveling and do your missions weeks down the road? The quests will always be there. The items will always be there to farm to make money, but the value on the flea market will change. Some items in the beginning will be worth more down the road, like sugar, for example, and a lot of items at the beginning will be worth pretty much nothing down the line. It's a decision. I think you should think about it. All right, now let's talk about tip number five, our final one of the video, and that is called quick scabbing for free money, gear, and keys. Focusing on leveling up your scav rep in the first few weeks of the wipe has some major benefits, such as faster queue times and better quality items that spawn on your scavenger. While playing scavenger raids can be a very good way of earning extra quest items and making money, it can also be time consuming. And instead of doing 10 to 20 minute scav games, I play factory for a very quick scav run. As long as the scav timer in the top right is 13 minutes or less, you can extract immediately without a run through, allowing you to get all the items on your character with fine and raid status. This is extremely good for getting things like tank batteries, extremely rare keys, lab key cards, quick piles of cash, and more. There are lots of amazing items that you can get simply spawning in as your scav. And there's lots of TikTok videos, YouTubes, and highlights of crazy stuff that spawn on scavs, especially on day one. And I'm calling this tip a quick scav because I literally queue in, which is a few minutes, go into factory, maybe loot an item, sometimes not even anything at all, and I immediately go to the extraction so I can spend more time playing my PMC. Playing your PMC often is the best way to get experience and you can level up faster. So not spending 10, 20 minutes at a time doing these very long scav raids, I try to limit that as much as possible. Now these five tips, I personally do every single Escape from Tarkov wipe and it's worked out pretty well for me so far. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Give it a shot, maybe get inspired to try some new things. But at the end of the day, a brand new Escape from Tarkov map is coming out, Streets of Tarkov, the first iteration. So even if you wanna be the most efficient and effective as possible, it is likely that most of us will be jumping on to take a peek at the brand new map and seeing how it plays. Thanks so much for watching today's YouTube video. Subscribe here for some more Escape for Tarkov videos. Watch my live stream Monday through Friday starting at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. When the wipe happens, I'll be doing back-to-back 12-hour -back streams. So I hope to see you guys there as well. And a special Christmas stream on December 26th. I hope to see you guys there. And uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas.